This isn't just a first for India, it's a first in lunar exploration. No one's successfully landed near the moon's south pole before. And it's a place of real interest for space science and also space exploration. It's one of the coldest places in the solar system where water and other important chemicals are frozen in deep, shaded craters. If we can go and land a spacecraft there, drive a rover around, take a sample, analyse it, then we can actually measure samples that could be a billion years old have just been waiting there for us to analyse and discover. And it'll tell us about how the solar system used to be, what were the conditions like when Earth formed. And if rovers can confirm abundant, accessible frozen water at the Moon's pole, that's a potential resource. Water and oxygen for a future Moon base. Water, too, can be used to make rocket fuel. That raises the prospect of the Moon as a staging post for fueling trips back to Earth or on to Mars. And right now, the Moon has never been busier. In May, Japan's ice base crashed on landing. At the weekend, Russia's Luna 25 failed to go into orbit and crashed too. India, of course, has just landed successfully. This Saturday, Japan's space agency is launching SLIM, its high-tech robotic moon lander. In November, we're expecting the launch of two NASA-funded missions, again to the moon's south pole. Next year, NASA is planning to send astronauts around the moon as part of its Artemis mission, and China is planning a robotic moon mission for next year also. So we can expect more heroic robotic landings and possibly a few new craters. But all this activity raises the controversial question of who owns the moon. In the 1967 Outer Space Treaty prohibits any territorial claims, but it doesn't say much about exploiting resources in space. NASA has drafted the so-called Artemis Accords, a set of principles that would allow the use of lunar resources for the benefit of humanity. 28 mainly Western nations have signed up, India has joined them. But Russia and China are opposed, saying these accords only serve American interests. As in the Cold War past, it seems our moon will continue to reflect political differences here on Earth.